Hello and welcome to the David Curtin Show here on today's News Talk TNT. Good to be with you again and thank you so much for joining me. Now, if you've been looking at the news or the fake news as I call it, the main story last weekend or over the weekend was the death of the little known Russian politician Alexei Navalny. Now, the breast beating and the noise that accompanied that by the mainstream media and by big politicians in the West is something that would normally be reserved for someone of far, far greater importance. It's almost as like the king has died, the amount of noise that has been made over his death. Probably, I would say, the noise about this is not out of any genuine concern for Navalny himself or his family, but this has been weaponized in order to bash Putin. And it seems that the media, the mainstream media and the politicians in the West, the powers that be, have got what I would call Putin derangement syndrome, which follows on after Brexit derangement syndrome and Trump derangement syndrome. Something is happening in the world that they don't like. They can't control. They've lost control of the narrative. They've lost control of what they want to happen. And what they want to do by this, by bashing Putin in the mainstream media, is to prolong this terrible war in Ukraine. Listen to some of the things that some people have said after Navalny's death. This is uh, Biden, and he put out a statement saying, this is Putin and his thugs. Make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Navalny's death. Putin is responsible. What happened to Navalny is yet more proof of Putin's brutality. Nobody should be fooled. Then the unelected Foreign Secretary of the United Kingdom, David Cameron, now Lord David Cameron, because he was put into the House of Lords uh, a couple of months ago, just so he could take up this position, said this, um, Putin must be held accountable for the death of Navalny. And he also promised there should be consequences for Putin. Since then, after a couple of days, he's now making noises about imposing extra sanctions on Russia, which are not going to hurt Russia at all, as the previous ones haven't done, but they will hurt the West and the Western economy. And as we see, nations outside the G7 or outside the orbit of the United States moving away and doing business between themselves and actually leaving the West out. These uh, sanctions which have been imposed on Russia are having the opposite effect of what's intended. The war in Ukraine should never have begun in 2022. Well, I say that, but actually, as we know uh, from the very, very good interview a couple of weeks ago between Tucker Carlson and President Putin, which the powers in, that be in the West didn't want to happen, is that this war didn't actually start in 2022. It started in 2014, which is what I and another uh, a number of other commentators have been saying saying all along. It started with the coup in 2014, with the colour revolution instigated by the CIA and the Under Secretary of State Victoria Newland, who played a big part in it, getting rid of the democratically elected president of the Ukraine. Whatever you think about Yanukovych, he was replaced with a puppet of the United States deep state, Poroshenko, and then Zelensky after him. Zelensky came to power in 2019, running on a platform of peace with Russia. That's why people voted for him in Ukraine. But the massive, the biggest bait and switch that maybe has ever been done is that Zelensky changed and his puppet masters then uh, commanded him to go to war and to keep this war going, not to make peace, not to talk with Putin. There was a peace agreement in April 2022. Boris Johnson went to him. We don't know exactly what he said, but the next thing you know is that the peace was not on the table and the war continued. Russia is doing very well in this ground campaign. It's just taken the key city of Avdivka, that is a very important city because that is the city which the Ukrainian forces, along with real neo-Nazi brigades like the Azov Battalion, used to shell Donetsk 
the largest city in the Donbass region, full of ethnic Russians for eight years between 2014 and 2022. Now Avdiivka has been taken, that will no longer be able to be used as a base for the Ukrainian forces to shell and kill ethnic Russians in Donetsk, which they did to 14,000 people at least in those years. No wonder people in the West have got Putin derangement syndrome, and they are using this to try to weaponize it and keep the war going. But there's something else that needs to be said about this as well. The people who are using this and speaking about Navalny and not stopping speaking about him are the most abject hypocrites. Last month, my friend Gonzalo Lira died in a Ukrainian prison in similar circumstances. He was denied medical treatment for pneumonia. He was tortured, beaten severely by his cellmates that were put there and the prison guards, and I'm sure the powers that be knew this was going to happen. All he did was use his free speech. He didn't do anything wrong. He just spoke out and he said things that perhaps the Ukrainian regime, the Zelensky regime, didn't like. The Western powers that be, Biden, Sunak, Johnson, all these people, say they're fighting for freedom and democracy. But here is just a man, an American citizen, no less, who was arrested, put in prison for speaking out and using his freedom, and they didn't say a word. Hardly any media outlets even mentioned it, and the only times they did was to make fun of him and mock him. And I despise those people for mocking my friend. And this week, we have the trial of Julian Assange, the final hearing before he may be extradited to the USA. He is another person who is in prison for nothing. He's done nothing wrong, just to use his free speech in order to call out severe and awful wrongdoings by the powers that be in the West. Surely, if we are a civilized nation, if we are a good civilization, we will not be locking up these people, Gonzalo Lira and Julian Assange. And at the very least, the people who are breastfeeding about Navalny could do the same for my friend Gonzalo Lira and this week for Julian Assange.